Welcome. In this instructional video we'll be looking at residual analysis. I have here a piece of software that allows us to examine the residuals formed with a line of best fit. So first of all, let's place a line. I'm able to move this line wherever I wish, changing the gradient and the y-intercept. By inspection, I think that looks pretty close as a line of best fit to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 green points. Let's have a look at the residuals. The residuals are simply how far below or above the line of best fit each point is. So this particular point has a negative residual because the actual y plot is below that predicted by the uh, line of best fit, the least squared regression. This particular point has a positive residual because the predicted value, sorry, the actual value is above the predicted value from the line of best fit, and so forth. A large negative residual, a large positive residual. With those residuals, we can generate squares, which is where the concept of least squared regression comes from. We can move our line of best fit to a ridiculous place, whereby the sum of the squares, as we've seen over here, 1,217 is quite large, or we can reduce the sum of the squares to a value of 141.7. So I'm guessing that's pretty close in terms of a good line of best fit. What we can do now is click on a button and that shows us the exact line of best fit. This is the least squared regression line. And you can see at that point, the sum of our squares is about 119. If we go anywhere left or right of that, I increase the sum. Let's clear that and start again. Let's reallocate our points. And see if we can again generate an approximate line of best fit. Okay, let's position our red line where it looks pretty good. Let's have a look at our residuals again. We have negative residuals and positive residuals. Let's generate our squares and see if we can reduce our value from about 345. It's 341. It's 323. It's 311. Let's have a look at the best example. Oh a fair way off. That's got a least squares of only 41.9. Let's move our line so it's close, approximates it. Sorry, that 41 I mentioned was the sum of the actual residuals. The sum of the least squares is about 290. Not a bad bit of software. I'll leave that in the comments so you guys can link onto that and check it yourself. I'd like to consider our ice cream sales and temperature example once again. Um, we know how to enter this into our TI Inspire. There we have it. Let's um, use our TI Inspire in terms of being able to work out predicted values. So we'll call it predicted sales. Okay. In order to do that, first of all, let's perform a linear regression on the data that we have here linear regression. And our x value was the temperature, our y value is sales, and I'd like to, let's put that in column F, give us a bit of room. Okay, from this we can see the gradient is 30.087 etc, and the y-intercept was negative 159.47 etc. Let's use for our purpose one decimal place. So, the predicted if I press equals, it says predicted sales equals 30.1 multiplied by the temperature, and it comes up bold because it identifies it as a heading, minus 159.5. Okay, so for a temperature of 14.2, using the least squared regression of sales is equal to 30.1 times the temperature, minus 159.5, I get a predicted sales of $267.92, which is well above 
the actual sales. So let's have a look at our residuals. Our residual equals again generates the heading. Residuals is equal to actual sales minus the predicted sales. Notice they all come bold when they're recognised. Hit that one and we can see that our first sales is actually $52 below the predicted using the equation, the linear regression line of best fit, least squared regression. Our second lot of sales is only about $9.14 below. Our third lot is $13.69 and here we have actually a prediction that's below the actual sales. Our sales are higher than the predicted by 33.98. Now we can look at that as a plot we could plot our temperature and we could plot it against our residuals. There we go and that demonstrates that this first particular day at about 12 degrees okay, has a residual of minus 13.69. This particular point around about 14 degrees, 14.2, has a residual of 52.92, negative that is, is below expectation. This one is at a temperature of 16.4, a residual of negative 9.14, and so forth for all the various points. Probably a more powerful way of looking at our residuals is to do a second plot. Let's look at temperature versus sales. Let's include a regression with the y equals mx plus c. There's our equation. And let's use our menu, analyze we could, with the residuals, look at the squares. So there's the sum of all the individual squares. However, that's a little bit crowded. So let's hide the residual squares. What we can do, analyze residuals and complete a residual plot. Okay, now this is the same plot as we had earlier, only we have both the original data and the plot underneath one another. So we can see at this first point, temperature of 11.9, sales of 185 is slightly below, it's down by 13.6. This particular point is has a residual of negative 52.8. This point is above the line, it has a positive residual of 34.1. This point is barely below the line, it has a residual of 9 and so forth. So we're plotting here the residual and we'll notice that the points above the line have a positive residual, the points below the line have a negative residual. And the distance they are, above or below, is represented with this residual plot. Now, that was one way of doing it. A much quicker way is to look at our original linear regression. And you'll notice down the bottom here, residuals. All the residuals for every data point are calculated there. So the first one, as it says, is minus 52.77. That was as we calculated as well minus 52. Well, we're rounding to one decimal place, whereas the calculator is using as many decimal places as it can handle. So there's another way of getting our residuals. Now this is all good. Um, we want to use this information. So from our data, and we've done our residual analysis, and this is what it looks like. We can see that it goes negative to positive to negative to positive to negative to positive. We want to draw some conclusion from that distribution. So here's our summary. When we have a residual analysis or plot that goes from negative to positive, negative to positive, we can say that the residual points are randomly scattered above and below the x-axis and the original data probably has a linear relationship. If we get a residual that goes from negative to positive and back to negative again, I like to call this the frowny face, we can probably say the original data probably has a non-linear relationship and that this data may need to be transformed. We'll get to that in the next chapter. Also, if our residual has a plot that's a positive to negative to positive, what I call the classical smiley face, we can conclude that the original data probably has a non-linear relationship. Back to our original plot. We can see that our data with the ice creams and temperature goes from negative to positive to negative to positive. It's very much scattered randomly. So it fits this particular plot. 
and from this we can conclude that the original data probably have a linear relationship.